Visitation into our midst today. Thank you for the wonderful testimonies that you have shown through in the life of your people. Thank you for the circumstances that you have changed forever. Amen. Thank you, God, for the continuous blessings that you are to so many of us and our families. Amen. Thank you for making us increasing a blessing to other people. Amen. We ask, God, that our gathering here today, oh God, you will use to increase your joy in our lives. Amen. Especially as we draw towards the close of this year. Father, we are asking of you, let the rest of this year be celebration every single day. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you and we bless you. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. Okay, we just want to share briefly the second part of a message we heard last week that is titled making the most of your life and i would recommend that if you were not here last week um, please do go and check on it is on our web i mean our, our youtube page and the central focus of that message was making impact how god expects every single one of us to make impact. In fact, in that message, we were able to conclude that um, we make impact anyway. We just need to decide whether we want to make positive impact or negative impact. Amen. This morning, I want to share a scripture with us, and, and I will just share with us four um, areas of our lives that we will need to make the most of if we want to make impact in our generation and in our lifetime. The scripture is, reading from, is written in Ephesians chapter 5 from verse 15 to 20. Ephesians 5, 15 to 20. It says, so be careful how you live. Don't live like fools, but like those who are wise. Make the most of every opportunity in these evil days. Don't act thoughtlessly, but understand what the Lord wants you to do. Don't be drunk with wine, because that will ruin your life. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs amongst yourselves and making music to the Lord in your heart and give thanks for everything to God and the, fa the God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Today I want to share with us four areas of our lives that we need to make the most of if we want to make impact in our lifetime. The first area we need to make the most of is our time. If you don't make the most of your time, you will find out that very easily, life will fly away and you wonder, where has 40 years, 60 years, 70 years, 80 years, where have they gone to? This last weekend, I was privileged to preach at the funeral of an 84-year-old lady who just passed away, one of our grandmothers. In church and you will wonder there was a day that she was given birth to but all of a sudden 84 years had melted away what we're saying is that if K is not taken you might think you are still 18 
You might think you are still 22. You might you think, I'm not yet married. I've not even started having children. One day you will sit down there and look back and the years are gone by. The Bible said in that same in, in that same scripture in the new in the in the King James version, it said, "Redeeming the time for the days are evil." It is very easy to think that you have control of time, but if you don't have what you use as a criteria of measuring how much grip you have on time, time will fly away. To live life. We spend time. And to spend our time, we need a life. We need a life to spend our time. Because, you see, time is what we use to measure the progressive of our existence on this side of eternity. On the other side of eternity, there's no time. It just be. That is why God is not in time. That's why when we are dealing with God, and we are looking at time for God, God is saying, no, I don't work like that. My ways are not your ways. Time don't affect me. I affect time. That's why it was easy for Mary and, Mary and the sister Martha go to Jesus and say, our brother, your friend, Lazarus, is ill and is dying. Please come and help. And Jesus said, I'm coming. And when he said he was coming, as they were going, they met another important situation on the way. And he did to and went to it. And by the time he was ready to go there, in the human eye, he was late. Because Lazarus died. But Jesus said, forget it. Lazarus didn't die. He was sleeping. Amen? Amen? When you're dealing with God, time is immaterial. Time is for us to have a measure of quantifying and measuring how we are progressing. But it does not have anything to do with God. The ultimate currency common to all of us in our everyday life is time. That's the currency we spend. And if you have got pounds in your pocket, sorry, don't worry, I'm not gonna take it. But how many of you genuinely have pounds in your pocket? Are you afraid? <laughs> cash. Oh, you are doing cashless. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Our means of exchange. On a daily basis, is supposedly termed as pounds, dollars, quacha, naira, cities, yen. Which other one? Euros. You think that is what you spend, but I beg to say to you, you are not spending all those money. All those things you are spending are papers. What you genuinely are spending is time. Because it is your time that you invest where you got those money from that they are rewarding you for. So you invest nine, eight, five, four, two hours at your places of work and they pay you back an equivalent of what they think you're worth. My question to you this morning is, what are your time worth to you? What does your time worth to you? For some people, your, your time is... How much is the minimum wage? Seven pounds fifty. The same time you invest at your workplace for one hour and end seven pounds fifty. Somebody else is investing the same one hour and they are earning 750 for that same hour. The same hour somebody else is working and they are earning 7,500 for that one hour. 
How much does your time worth? That's my question to you this morning. When you perfect the art of putting value on your time, the means of living life comes your way easily. How much have you valued your time? The value you place on your time is what all of you are using to reward you. I've seen photographers who the same camera, the same paper, the same flash, everything the same, the same occasion. They look at you and they snap you a picture. And that picture is worth how much? 30 pounds. Another camera that is being used by another person snap the same event, the same occasion, and that person is earning 3,000. 30 pounds, 3,000. What is the difference? The value of the persons carrying the two cameras. Please ask your neighbor, what is your value? Before you ask your neighbor too far, ask yourself, what is really my value? What's my value? Your value is what determines the prime of your time. A wasted time is lost forever. Only the time invested as value to someone or into something yield endless profit. When time's gone, you can't take it back. Please don't get me wrong. You can rewind your wristwatch. It does not stop the time from going on. I've seen people who set their time and are before the time to help them to adjust. You are living in the figment of an imagination. There's nothing like that. You are slowing yourself down by an hour to all of us. It's time for us to make up our minds, especially as people in church, sons and daughters of God, to convince ourselves that we are good enough on the tough to make a difference. Make the most of your time. Because you can't determine how long you have to live. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 1 says, There is a time and a season for every purpose under the heavens. How long is your time for the purpose? It's key. When you know you, ha you have five years, you will not live as though you have 50 years. If you have 50 years, you can say, oh, I still have time. Steve Job of blessed memory. He said, as soon as he heard the facts, that he was going to die, regardless of what anybody could do. That is one of the richest man who's made impact in this world that we live in. When he heard the news that he was going to die, inevitably going to die, he said everything paved into insignificance because he, never, he doesn't have time anymore. The most important thing to him then was his family. How much time will he have to talk to his wife and talk to his children? Ask yourself, how much time have you got? Because if you consider how much time you have got, you will change your perception and how you live life. Number two, 
make the most of your gifts. There's nobody without a gift. That's my personal belief. Rather, there are lots of people with undiscovered and unpolished gifts. Take time to discover your gifts so you could have time to make the fullness of life with your gifts. Take time to discover what that gift is so that you can have time to make a life out of your gift. Stop acting thoughtlessly. That is what that scripture tells us. Stop acting thoughtlessly. To act thoughtlessly, because I read it again and again and then again. To act thoughtlessly is to be like a zombie. You know, a zombie just moves by what is moving it. He's not moving itself. A zombie just stands. And then if you do like this, the zombie will go according to the force moving it. That means that zombie doesn't have a reason to think. Why? Because it's depending on another force that is moving it. Don't be like that. He says, don't act thoughtlessly. Take a deliberate approach to your life. I need to take a deliberate approach to my life. A deliberate approach to life by each, by each and every one of us will help us to develop the needed skill for gifts to thrive. A deliberate attempt to make our lives matter will help us to develop the skills that we need to allow our gifts to thrive. A constant engagement with the mind always creates or leads to a new opportunity. Some people are okay with, this is how they said we should do it. This is what they say I should do. Guess what? They can do it for 20 years and they will not think differently. So for 20 years, they are not going to think. They will be thoughtlessly doing the same thing over and over again and they will be tired of doing it. God is wondering, is this the same machine I created? And I put everything I had made into his or her care. Think about it. God made Adam and Eve. And then said to Adam, everything I have created, I'm handing over to you. To cultivate it, to look after it, and make sure that it regenerates how it works. Yet, somebody who is in the image and likeness of Adam and Eve, all they are going to do for 50 years is carrying this file here and back, and here and back, and here and back, and here and back. Nothing else. How is the world that God created going to be looked after? Recreated, replenished. The greatest decision you and I could convince ourselves about making is to convince ourselves that I can make impact. Because the, the truth is, for many of us, our mind have been so battered and bruised 
that we don't believe we can make impact. I've once been to a conference and seminar before that let you know that if you have, if you were to be, the speaker said, if he had the understanding of what education is, he will opt out of education. He said the reason is that in some way, unless you have a balanced education, education is a mechanism that is used to train you to, to go in a particular way only so that you can serve other people, ignoring perhaps your giftings that God placed in you. But if you are able to have education, yet make sure that you don't kill your own gift and dreams, you have it all. But he said, I would rather forfeit education if I had a chance and face my dream, face my goal. We spent a great deal last week to talk about how to make impact, because all of us can make impact. In fact, we gave an example that um, an unborn baby or even a dead body make impact. How much more are you that is breathing? You can make greater impact. Listen to this. Raw gifts can't take you anywhere. Only polished gifts is all you need to take you to the best of everywhere you want to get to. Some of you know how to speak. And all the while you were growing up, people tell you, you talk too much. You talk too much. That's all you've heard since when you were six months old. <laughs> of course, you see some six months old. <laughs> I know one. I won't mention the name. But that is how they start. And people label them, you talk too much. You talk too much. You can see it long enough until that boy or girl pick up the fact that I shouldn't be talking. And once you get them to that stage, you've killed their dream. What do you need to do? Rather, let them talk, but direct and guide what they say. Because such a person, all they need to do is to speak. Put a value on that speaking. And they're doing good. Do you know that today, in central London, you see some theaters packed with thousands of people. Guess what they're doing there? They're not going to listen to one man who will talk for four hours, making them laugh. The things that are silly, things that are good, things that are funny, even the ones that are not funny, they paid to go and see the man. What's he using? Just talking. Why? He's put a value on his gift. Polish your gift. Stop going around with raw gift. Raw gift won't take you anywhere. In fact, it gets you a time, raw gift irritates. But when you polish a gift, you see it abounding. Number three, make the most of your situation. Make the most of your situation. In every situation you find yourself, there is what God has for me to do. What does God have for you to do in that situation? The situation you are is common to most people. In fact, most to all, almost all of us. The difference is that people handle their situation differently. And you can get a scripture in 1 Corinthians 10, 13. I won't bother reading it, but you can look at it. All of us are going through the same, the same situation. But... People are handling their situation differently. 
your situation is part of your design. Your situation is part of the plan, the blueprint of your destiny. I'm going to repeat that. Your situation is part of the blueprint of your destiny. The pit, sorry, the hatred, the pit, the slavery, the prison, and the abandonment of Joseph in the prison was the track that Joseph needed to become the prime minister of Egypt. Every one of those things is necessary. That is what makes me to conclude that every train needs a track. Your situation is the track of your destiny. Every train needs a track. When you see a track somewhere, there, when you see a train somewhere, there's a track that's going to run on. Your situation is your track. Some of you are looking at other people's track. They can't fit you. They can't fit you. They can't help you. If you go on it, you're going to have a crash. Your own situation can carry exactly what your, tra your train is. Can carry the weight of it. Can carry the detour of it. God knows how many detours you're going to have in life. It's all been factored in. Oh, Pastor, you don't understand what I'm saying. I came from a family where everybody is always divorcing and divorcing and divorcing. Guess what? That does not bother you. Focus on where you're going. You can make a choice that I'm not going to have a divorce case in my matter. Regardless of what choice my grandparents made, that is them. My mother might have made the same thing and my father, that is for them. For me and my household, we will do what the Lord wants us to do. No divorce. That is your track. Make a choice about it. It is time to stop seeing the problem in your situation. Look out for the opportunities that your situation carry. Your situation carries opportunities, but if you focus on seeing problems, the opportunities will be hidden away from you. That is why your pain, your failures, the hatred, the poverty, the challenges you're facing through, they could be a motivating factor to get you to where you want to get. They are a motivating factor. I want a testimony of a wonderful lady a few days ago. Wonderful couple, lovely couple, they were. Enjoying life. And then the husband was driving, and they were going somewhere, and guess what? Down the, down the, turn, the, the, the tunnel, the husband fell asleep. And he had an accident, had a crash. The husband jumped out, escaped. But the, the lady was trapped in. Had a broken back, broken ribs, broken waist, everything broken from waist downward, she was paralyzed. So she, she could never walk again. But then she sat down and she's, she, she's, give, she's gifted as an artist to draw. And then she said she sat down in the hospital room so many days, months, and years, two years up, perhaps. And they said she wasn't going to walk again. And she said, each time she looks outside of the window, I said, no, I'm more than just lying here. I'm going to do something. At least let me move my hands. And then she called for them to bring her her drawing kits. And she started just drawing. She started drawing. She started drawing. In the midst of that, her husband divorced her. In the midst of that, her husband texted her one morning that she was getting to remarry. And she said to herself, that this is not going to stop me. I'm going to have my life to the fullest. Mm -hmm. And she's determined 
she got out of hospital. She couldn't work anymore, but she became reading only wheelchair. And today, she's one of the shakers and movers in Pakistan, in Pakistan economy, in Pakistan history, doing amazing work. What am I saying? Her situation was powerful enough to condition her. But she fought that situation and became a primus. The places that she, you can never get to with two legs, she's gotten there. The kind of aura that she has, speaking now to thousands of people all over the world, she's one of the ambassadors of the UN in Pakistan, doing a lot of valuable things. You need to make up your mind that your situation will not stop you. Change what you see. See the other side of what you are seeing now that doesn't look possible. positive. There is always two sides to a coin. Put your mind that part of making the most of your situation is realizing that you are that you are you and your battles are going to lead you to your destiny you and your battles is what you need don't go leaving your battles your battles is meant to be fought through and then take you to your battles finally make the most of your relationships in that scripture you we read said don't be drunk with wine but it says we should sing songs and have relationship with the Holy Spirit. Fantastic is good to have companionship. It's good to have relationship. It is your choice whom we decide to have in your company. Your company brings you an elevation or a decline. Whosoever you attach yourself to, they are like an elevator. They either take you up or they bring you down. In the Psalms 1 verse 1, it says, Oh, the joy of those who do not follow the advice of the wicked, or stand around with sinners, or join with the mockers, but they delight in the law of the Lord, maintaining it day and night. They are like trees planted by the rivers, river bank, bearing its fruit each season. You need to decide who are your company. Make a choice of them. If you don't choose them, if you allow your company to choose you, they will choose you and take you to where you don't want to get to. There are some people, their friends just need to say, I'm going somewhere. For some reason, they find themselves going to the same place. You can decide. Sorry, I don't want to go there. Part of what we're teaching our boy now, who is in secondary school, preparing for GCSE, is you now need to decide that I'm going to read at this time. Even if my other friends are playing football, this is my own reading time. And I will not violate it, and you cannot make me violate it. Regardless of what you do, that is how to make choices. Stay away from anybody in your company that is overshadowing on God's influence on your life. No matter who they are, if they are influencing your life wrongly, stay away from them. Say that your pastor say, I, my pastor say I should stay away from you. If they ask why, tell them the reason. You are drawing me away from God. Anybody that will take you, anybody that is confronting and challenging your relationship with God, that person is not meant for you. You need to sort them out or they will sort you out. You need to know how to address them. You need to know how to manage them. Because some of them, you need to manage them. Otherwise, they manage and manipulate you. But when you manage them correctly, you're able to deliver yourself away from an eventuality that is not good enough for you. Make the most 
of these four areas of your life. And I have no doubt that you'll make a success of your destiny. Amen. Let's just pray in Jesus' name. Ask God for inspiration and power from him. We're growing and getting into a stage of our lives where the cost of not getting it right is too much. It's too high. It's good to take risk, but we we'll take, take risk knowing that we are well able. That's what God said to us. He says, you now need to go and take the land that I've given to you. Joshua and Caleb says, we are well able to do it. When there are other ten who says, we cannot. Don't be part of those who sees the cannot. In the midst of the cannot, there are at least one or two that says, we are well able. And I want to say that you should be one of the we are well able. Because if you look at the giftings in your life, if you look at the opportunities God has brought your way, if you look at the resources God has positioned around you, if you look at the blessings that God has put in you, the love that God has for you, the destiny that God has shown in you, that he wants to do for you, you can make up your mind today. Say, God, it's all for you. I want to pray for people where you are who feel God, you are talking to me to change my approach to life. To begin to see possibilities rather than problems. To see how to add value rather than take away value. To see the chance of making it to the mark and beyond the mark than those that will fail and fall short. I just want to pray for you that God will enable you. Wherever you are, if I can just see your hands wherever you are, because of time I won't bother to bring you forward, but I will just want to pray where you are to say, God, if there's something you can do today, it is to touch this hand. I can see those two ladies. I can see that hand at the back there. Any other person, you're not raising up your hand to anybody. This is not about age or background or beauty or what you look like or what you don't look like is about do you want to make impact in life and today we're saying you align sense to make impact and see those hands father god i ask of you this three four hands that are lifted up they are lifted up to you. Before they came here, you already seen them. In fact, you directed them here. I ask, oh God, let the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit envelop these ones and hold them to pulling them up to another level. Another level where they will have the joy of doing exploit for your glory. The joy of making amazing impact in life. Father God, we give you praise and honor. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. God bless you. Make sure you add us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and visit the church website.